Ahoy there, mateys! Today, we're going to be taking a look at Critical Depth on the PlayStation. This game was developed by Singletrack and published by GT Interactive in 1997. If you're old enough to remember the early years of the PlayStation, then you're probably familiar with Singletrack. They were responsible for such hits as Warhawk, Jet Moto, and Twisted Metal. Not too long after the release of Twisted Metal 2, they were acquired by publisher GT Interactive. However, Sony retained the rights to the Twisted Metal license. This, of course, meant that Single Track couldn't develop Twisted Metal games anymore, and that's why the series started to suck after the second game. Anyway, Single Track had expertise in the vehicular combat genre, and they wanted to put this to use on a new IP. So, in order to have their new IP stand out from the Twisted Metal series, they decided to use submarines. Hello! I'm in a submarine! Hello! Now it's time to dive in and see if Twisted Metal with submarines is as good of an idea as it sounds. So, right off the bat, we've got this really cinematic intro video that reminds me a little bit of Stargate or Independence Day mixed with Waterworld or maybe The Abyss. It's a pretty good intro video that sets up the story of the game nicely. And basically the story goes like this. Douglas McCraggan, that's this guy right here. Yes, his name is Doug McCraggan. Anyways, he found a bunch of weird alien shit down at the bottom of the ocean. Then he accidentally opens this portal, which is definitely not a Stargate. It's the Fargate! F! It's different from that movie which I have never seen! Ghost Fog, get it? And he kinda gets his face melted off, Raiders of the Lost Ark style. So now, a bunch of nutty, kooky people from around the world are getting their heavily armed, combat-ready submarines together to explore the depths of the ocean and try to be the first to discover the secret of all this crazy alien shit. Let's briefly go over our crazy cast of characters. We've got the alien-worshipping, creepy cult boys in the Crystal Ship. There's the Men in Black zipping around in their CIA submarine. Then we've got the KGB in their Soviet shit sub, followed by the Frenchy Frog Boys with their submarine Mr. Grabby Hands. Then there's the Lovecraftian Scary Squid sub, which is piloted by a mad scientist who wants to kill everybody on Earth and repopulate the planet with his hot wife. After that, we've got the do-gooder dolphin douchebags, followed by the obligatory pirate character, which is required for all games with boats. Then we've got the evil corporate business lady who apparently didn't get the memo about this taking place in the ocean and decided to bring an airplane to a submarine fight, followed by this thrill-seeking hippie dude who doesn't even have a submarine. He just zooms around on this little sea bob and he's basically this game's equivalent of Mr. Grimm. Next up, we've got some freedom fighters in their revolutionary rust bucket, after that, we've got an Indiana Jones knockoff who wants to collect all the alien shit and put it in a museum. Then we've got Sharky Sharktooth, and as you can clearly see, his submarine resembles a shark. So look out everybody, cool guy right here. And last, but certainly not least, there's me. Remember everybody? I'm in a submarine. Hello! From the ocean, it's me! So, right off the bat, you might notice that this game feels a lot like Twisted Metal 2, and that's because they actually used the same engine to make this game. The main difference here, of course, is that you can ascend and descend in the water, adding a third dimension of movement. The controls are basically the same as well, except this game has a dedicated shield button. Another big difference from Twisted Metal is that the main story missions aren't deathmatches. Instead, you have to collect five alien pods, which will activate the portal and allow you to advance to the next level. Now, this means you gotta keep an eye on your enemies and make sure they don't collect the pods and win the match before you do. It also means that, technically, you could win the match without killing any of the enemies if you collect all the pods quickly enough. Okay, now we've gotta talk about the combat. Starting off with the standard infinite ammo weapon that they give you, it's a torpedo. And I've got to say that compared to the machine gun in Twisted Metal, it feels really ineffective. Part of the problem here is the slow rate of fire. 
which, when compared to the machine gun, makes it a lot more difficult to time your shots with your opponent's movements. The bigger problem is the fact that in this game you have to aim on the horizontal and vertical axis, as opposed to just aiming side to side like in Twisted Metal. This makes it extremely difficult to get a bead on your opponent and to have any accuracy with your torpedoes. Now I think the developers realized how difficult it was to aim the torpedoes, and so most of the other weapons in the game have some type of homing effect. Now, in an effort to help the player defend against all of the homing missiles that would be coming their way, they added the shield button, which, if you time it correctly, you can actually deflect projectiles back towards the enemy that fired them at you. This game also has special moves that you can perform with button combinations very similar to those found in Twisted Metal 2. Now let's talk about the different levels in the game. First off, I want to say that most of the levels are pretty well designed. They all sort of have their own theme and have nice unique areas for combat to take place in. A lot of them have secluded pathways that you can use to escape from battle as well, which is nice. My personal favorite level is definitely Stage 3, Battle in the Pacific Rim. It's a major metropolitan city that's been completely submersed in the ocean, which means all those Jagoffs who don't know how to merge lanes and made me sit and wait in traffic have all drowned and died at the bottom of the sea, so it's easily the best level. Something interesting about all of the levels is the fact that if you descend too deeply into the ocean, you will reach the titular critical depth. This means that your submarine will take damage until you ascend above this level. One negative thing that I do have to point out about the different stages is the fact that because they all take place under the ocean, in some way they all feel a little samey. Of course, this can't really be helped, so I can't hold it against them that much. The graphics are pretty okay for the time, and a lot of the textures at the bottom of the ocean have a nice realism to them. The sound effects are completely adequate, and the music is cinematic, but not exactly memorable. Looking at this game overall, it's really hard not to compare it to Twisted Metal. After all, they run on the same engine, and they're both vehicular combat games. And after spending some time with this game, it became pretty obvious to me that it just wasn't as fun as Twisted Metal was. I definitely respect Single Track for trying something different here, not only with the submarines, but also by changing the main goal of the game from deathmatch to collecting five pods and reaching a portal. Unfortunately, that goal can sometimes encourage you to avoid combat, choosing to instead camp in a corner and wait for the other subs to bring the pods to you, and that can be a little boring sometimes. It also doesn't help that a lot of times combat feels pretty awkward, unless you happen to be loaded up with a lot of weapons which means you'll have to spend a considerable amount of time looking for weapons in the level. The shield mechanic is a nice idea to help the player defend against enemy attacks, but honestly, it's a little too difficult to get the timing down perfectly for it to be very effective. Taking all this into consideration, I have to say the combat just doesn't feel anywhere near as good in this game as it does in Twisted Metal. It's funny, I seem to remember liking this game more when I first played it back in 1997. I guess I'd have to say it really just didn't age all that well, especially compared to its predecessor. You know, it's a real shame that Single Track couldn't have retained the rights to Twisted Metal, because I'm sure they could have done some really great things with that series had they been allowed to continue. Of course, years later, many of them would go on to work on Twisted Metal Black, which turned out pretty good. But to wrap up the review, I will say that Single Track put forth a valiant effort with Critical Depth. I feel like they really did try to make a good game here. Unfortunately, it just didn't work out so well by adding that third dimension of movement. I wouldn't say it's a bad game, although it probably hasn't aged all that well, but I think there's some fun to be had with it. So that's my review of Critical Depth. Thank you all for watching, and I hope you enjoyed the video, and I would love to know what you think about Critical Depth down in the comments below. And of course, if you enjoyed the video, I would greatly appreciate it if you could hit the like button, and perhaps consider subscribing to the channel if you'd like to see more content. Look at me in my crappy submarine, crappy submarine, crappy submarine. Here I am in my crappy submarine. Crappy submarine, crappy submarine. Let's play games in my crappy submarine.
crafty submarine, crafty submarine. Here I am in my crafty submarine, crafty submarine, crafty submarine.